What form did the prophets and the believers' prayers mentioned in the Quran take? God has not set any limits to believers on praying and has invited them to take refuge in himself and to ask for help in anything they may need, stating, Call on me and I will answer you. Quran 40, 60 When we look at the Prophet's prayers in the Quran, we see that they prayed with a genuine sincerity and turned to God, ridding themselves of everything else. As well as this, the prophets praised God by his names when praying. That being the case, what all believers should do is turn to God with honesty and true sincerity and reveal all their secrets to him. Some of the examples that are narrated in the Quran as the prayers of prophets and believers to God are as follows. To guide them on the straight path, the path of those God has blessed, and to separate them from the path of those with anger in them, and of the misguided. To make the place they live as a place of safety. To provide the inhabitants of their city, who have faith in God in the last day with fruits. To make them Muslims submitted to God and their descendants a Muslim community submitted to God. To show them their rights of worship. To turn unto them in mercy. To grant them good, both in this world and in the hereafter. To safeguard them from the punishment of the fire. Not to disgrace them on the day of rising not to take them to task if they forget or make a mistake. These prayers uttered by the prophets are also a guide for us. We too most frequently pray to God in our daily lives and reveal to Him all our desires and problems. We must not forget that God accedes to the wishes of those of His servants who pray to Him in sincerity. Is repentance at death accepted in the sight of God? God reveals in verses that He will accept repentance from people, but not at the time of death. Even so, man has the chance to repent all his wrongdoings until the end of his life. God has not set any limits on those matters that one may ask forgiveness for. A person might have committed the worst possible crime or might have been irreligious. Yet regardless of all these things, if he sincerely repents and prays to God for forgiveness and believes in Him, then, as God reveals, he may accept the repentance of that person if he wills it. However, the case of a person who has not found it necessary to repent of a long life of disbelief and to reorient himself, yet expresses his penitence in the fear of death in his dying breath is different. In this case, the decree regarding those who say that they repent is stated in the Quran as follows. There is no repentance for people who persist in doing evil until death comes to them and who then say, Now I repent nor for people who die as a disbeliever. We have prepared for them a painful punishment. People in general pray only at the times of hardships. How is the wrongness of this behavior described in the Quran? People who are remote from the morals of the Quran pray to God only when they face a disease, a trouble, or a disaster. People who seek refuge in God at such times and pray to Him day and night to free them from their troubles and grant them blessings change the minute the situation is resolved. They forget to pray to God and to give thanks to Him for the blessings He has given them. That stems from their not being true believers in the first place. The attitude they adopt in the face of trouble and difficulty comes from the realization of their helplessness. As soon as they are freed from their difficulties, 
they immediately reveal their insincerity towards God and their true conception of proper morality. The hypocritical and insincere manner of these people is exemplified in the Quran in these words. When the waves hang over them like canopies, they call on God, making their religion sincerely His. But then when He delivers them safely to the land, some of them are ambivalent. None but a treacherous, thankless man denies our signs. Why cannot one be happy without living by the religion? It is not possible for a person to be happy in the true sense so long as he does not live by the religion. This is because for a person to be happy, first of all his conscience needs to be at ease. In other words, there should not be anything to cause him distress, confuse him, or to make him feel remorse. Ease of conscience can be attained only in one way, which is to live by the religion. Conscience is under the control of God and always commands a person to believe in God, to fulfill the requirements of religion, and to act in compliance with the morals of the Quran. For that reason, it is not possible for an irreligious person who has been struggling against this command of his conscience all through his life to be happy. God has revealed that man can attain ease of heart and true peace only by having faith in God. Those who believe and whose hearts find peace in the remembrance of God, only in the remembrance of God can the heart find peace. What is the true nature of the life of this world? One of the most serious but largely unacknowledged misconceptions is the supposition that the life of this world is the only real life. In fact, the world is a temporary place created by God to test man. What is real is the life after death. Therefore, everything that charms people and preoccupies them in the fleeting and short-lived existence of this world is an enjoyment of delusion. As stated in Surah 3, verse 14, God warns people against this deception, reminding them that the real beautiful abode is in the presence of God. To mankind, the objects of worldly appetites are painted in glowing colors women and children, and heaped up mounds of gold and silver, and horses with fine markings, and livestock and fertile farmland. All that is merely the enjoyment of the life of this world. Far better is the return to God. As this verse reveals, valuable ornaments, assets, goods, profitable businesses, beautiful and wealthy spouses, healthy children, and fine houses are all values that tie people to this world. One must not forget that all these things are given by God as blessings and that they are only temporary. As is revealed in a number of verses, the truly beautiful place to arrive at is the home of the hereafter. A person must use the blessings given to him in order to prepare for the hereafter. People who act in the awareness of that important fact are never beguiled by the baubles of this world.